G'day everybody, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This is the picture we're going to start off to today. We're going to do some sort of like War of the Worlds composite. So we've got our city street here. The first thing we need to do is get rid of the sky. We want to replace the sky here. So on our city street layer, I'm going to come up to Channels and pick the composite blue. Back to my layers on the city street, I'm going to come down here to Adjustments and add a Levels. I'm going to clip that Levels just to the city street and bring the black level to about 54 and this white level to about 51 I think it is just so you see it go black here snap to black what we'll do is click back on the city street grab our flood fill selection tool and just click on the black here then I'll grab my selection brush tool make it a tiny little bit bigger and just holding my option key down I'm just going to get rid of these little bits that I don't want and just tidy it up a little bit along the edges. Okay, on our channels, we can go back to our normal picture. On our layers, we can delete the levels adjustment. Let's just delete that. Let's zoom in. We've still got our selection brush tool holding option key and we'll just tidy up a little bit more. And that doesn't look too bad now. So Command-0, let's hit Delete on our keyboard and get rid of that sky. So now we can turn on our sky. I've already got the, the sky down here. We can just turn that on and you can see that our sky is in place. But we need our city street to sort of be a night, sort of night time as well. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my color picker and I'm just going to pick the darkest color in the sky here and activate it and I can see now that my HSL I've got 214, 57 and 15 for my HSL. I'm going to add on the adjustments a recolor down here. Clip that just to the street and I'm just going to copy these uh, numbers here. So 214, 57 and 15. So I've got sort of that night, same color for the night. While I'm here, I'll also add an exposure and we will just darken that down a little bit. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so we've got our city set up. So what I've done um, before is just add another layer here on overlay at 100% and I've just painted in some of those lights just using a soft brush and you can see it's just subtle, just a few little lights in the city there, and I've added those. I've also added a poster on the wall up here. So this is our poster girl here, and that layer is just on overlay with an opacity of 77%. So just sort of like a little bit of graffiti on the wall here. Also on that, I've also added another poster, and I've put this one just on the wall here. And again, that's on overlay, and just use my perspective tool to put that in place. And as you can see, the light pole doesn't quite match now. So I've just copied this section of the light pole with my pen tool, and I've just added that light pole in front. But as you can see, it's a different color. So we need to get that recolor from the city here. We'll make a copy of that, and we'll add that recolor to our light pole. And also we'll need to copy the exposure as well. So we've got them both the same. So let's get that exposure on there as well. Okay, doing pretty well here. So what we might add next is let's add our car. So we've got our car here and you can see I've already removed the car door and that's up here by itself because I've opened the car door using the mesh warp tool. And I'll show a little video here of how I did that using the mesh warp tool um, just opening that door. I've also got a man to add, and I've also added the man shadow, which is just a copy of the man with an effects of color overlay, a layer effect of color overlay. And then I've just dra dragged the shadow down. Also added this crate here, and I've also added the crate shadow. And that's exactly the same as how I did the man, and the opacity on both of those are 47%. So we've got the shadow there. So we've got that in place. So let's now add our War of the Worlds uh, characters here. So I've got um, three of those to add, and they're all just facing different directions. And for all of these uh, War of the Worlds 
um, characters I've got here, we're going to add some light beams. So I've got these light beams here that I'm just adding. And those light beams are just set to screen. They've got a color adjustment for the green color on them. And I've just used mesh warp to warp them into the position that I want them in. So that's our light beams in place there. So the other things we can turn on, we've got our birds here, so just above those. And we'll make another copy of those birds with Command J. Make that a bit smaller. And we'll just add them back here where the other War of the Worlds machines are. So just about there. Very subtle. You can't really see them too much, but that's okay. So we've got all of our layers turned on set for our smoke layer here. So that's just a little bit of smoke for those bottles. And those bottles, as you can see, have got some warning signs on there for bacteria, as I believe that is what defeated the Martians or the machines in War of the Worlds in the original HG Wells. So we've got all of our layers turned on. So now we need to go through and just do some blending and add some highlights. So, so we'll start off with our city here, and I'm going to add another recolor, clip it to the city, and this one will go into the green, the same sort of green as our laser beams here. And on that recolor, I'm going to go Command I and just invert it. We'll come over here to our brushes. We'll grab a nice soft brush, just on our basics. We'll come down to a soft brush. Make our brush a little bit bigger. Let's get our colors back to the original colors, hitting D on our keyboard. You can see now that if we're painting in white, we're going to have some green go over these buildings. So we'll have the flow at 25%. We'll paint in white. And just where you think this green is going to sort of reflect on the building here, you might just add some sort of subtle along there like that. We might even just turn the opacity down on that a little bit. Maybe about there looks pretty good. Okay, we're going to need to do that with our Martians as well. So our front Martian here, I'll just add that recolor, change it to the green, and again invert it. Might drop my flow a little bit now to maybe 20. Smaller brush, and we'll just add some of that green highlight to our Martian here because he's going to have some of that green coming off. We can do that to the others as well. Might just copy that one and just add that to the others. It's going to be fairly subtle for them. And just add that little bit of green. And really the one at the back doesn't really matter, but we'll add it anyway and just add some of that as well. That looks pretty good. Okay, let's take care of our car now. So our car, we'll come down to our car. What I'm going to do there, I'm going to add a selective color. Come down here to selective color. Clip that to my car. Come here to neutrals. And I'm going to do maybe 30 on the cyan and maybe minus 20 on the, on the yellows. So let's just have a look at that. Just brings that blue down a little bit. While I'm here, I might just copy that and quickly add it to the man as well. And then on the car, we'll add an exposure and we'll bring that exposure down. Now, as you can see, we'll need to add both of those to the car door as well. So let's do that. We'll add the exposure, Command J. We'll copy that up to the car door. And we'll also add the selective color, Command J, and add that onto the car door as well. So we've got everything sort of matching. We might do the same to the crate. So selective color onto our crate, exposure onto our crate as well. So just sort of blending that in a little bit. On our smoke, we might add an exposure to our smoke. Clip that to our smoke there. Let's just darken that down a little bit so we can just see those bottles. Okay, let's close these up. And on our man, we're going to do the same. We're going to add a recolor. We're going to add that green. And again, we're going to invert it. So on our brush, flow maybe now of about 15, I think, 15. We're still on white. Let's add a little bit of that glow to our man here. We'll add an exposure as well. Clip it to our man. Let's darken that up a little bit. But with our brush, 
we'll switch those colors to black and then we'll just bring out a bit of that light there as well on our man. Let's do the same to the car. Let's add that recolor from our adjustments. Again the green and again invert. Back to white, so X on our keyboard to get back to white. Let's bring their flow up to 19 or 20. Let's just add some of that green onto the car. Maybe slightly through the windows there as well. Onto the bonnet. And then on our exposure, we'll go to black, painting in black, and we'll add some of those highlights along there as well. Just make them sort of shine out a bit more. That's not looking too bad. So on our city, let's come to our city. And on the recolor for the city, let's just make sure we got the right one. Yep, on the recolor for the city, we'll go back to white. I'm just going to add a little bit of that green underneath the car as well, sort of shining through there. Okay, I think we're not looking too bad. Now there's a lot more that you could do. You could turn on the lights of the car. You could, you know, add quite a few more things if you wanted to. With that crate, I think I need to darken it down a little bit more. And there we go. There we go, everybody. That is all of our layers turned on. Some of our highlights turned on. If you think the highlights on the man are a little bit too much, we can go to the recolor. Just turn it down a little bit. Same as the car as well. We could probably just come to that recolor and maybe just bring the opacity down a little bit. And that is my composite. Let's come up here and just go Merge Visible. So we've got all those layers together. Come up here to our tone mapping as usual. Bring that tone compression down a little bit. You can also use the um, Develop Persona if you want as well. Maybe bring that down a tad. A little bit on the refinement and maybe just that little bit of an S-curve. There we go, let's hit apply, and there we go everybody, that is my composite for this week, my War of the Worlds composite. Um, if you are interested in the War of the Worlds machine, and most of this created all the little parts of the legs and everything that you see mostly is just created by all of these tools here, so all of these tools just picking out the rectangles and the eclipse tool and just making them different sizes and um, creating the War of the Worlds um, machine here. So this one will be available on the Buy Me A Coffee site in the PNG format. If you would like to use it, download it absolutely free. Um, that, as I said, will be available on the Buy Me A Coffee site for you to use for your own composite if you would like to give it a go. All the other photos that I've used here will be listed below for you to go and check out and download from Pexels or Pixabay or Free Pick wherever I found them, but the links are there. So if you have enjoyed the tutorial this week, please give it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, I'll say to you, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video.